Hi friends, welcome back. Today is an exciting day here in the garden. Today we are planting our tomatoes and peppers. We are here in zone 7B and it is the end of February, so it's time to get the tomatoes and peppers started. And so that's what we're doing today. And as you can see, I've got four trays. I'm going to be doing a sweet pepper tray, a hot pepper tray, a tomato tray, and then a half tomato, half bok choy tray. And I'll kind of walk you through the varieties and everything that I'm doing. We're gonna start with the hot pepper tray just because that's what's right in front of me. As you can see, I've already put the soil blocks in my trays. These trays are from Bootstrap Gardener and um, the soil blocks have been working really well. This is my first season to try them and I have a video where I tried them for the first time and they came together really nicely. I've been doing half of my planting in soil blocks and half in the trays just to see how it goes. But the update a few weeks in is they're doing great. All of my seeds are doing great. I, I hesitate to say that. Hopefully they may stay doing great. One year we had a mouse get in and eat like the tops off of all of our seedlings. It was really heartbreaking. So hopefully nothing like that happens this year. But what we're gonna start with are our hot peppers here. And if you've been around, you know that I have these little charts that I write down my varieties on and I just put the number of squares that I have pieces and then I just fill in those squares and it's really easy. Then I take a sticker. I get stickers at the back to school sales because they're super cheap and I'll put it one to match. Like I'll put a purple heart sticker at the bottom of this page and a purple heart sticker on this tray. And that helps me to know. And I'll even make an extra notation that this is the orange tray. And that helps too. But I have several orange trays out there, so now I know it's the purple heart orange tray. It just, it's an easy way to keep track of what all you're planting and where, because I found if you write the little tags and stick them in there, inevitably some of them fall out, the stuff wears off of them and you can't read them. This is just a really good foolproof way that I like to keep track. And then I bring this out when I go to check on all my seedlings and I know what's where. All right, the first hot pepper, and this one is really indispensable in the garden, that I'm gonna do is jalapeno. And I have an early jalapeno variety from MI Gardener and I have um, just a plain jalapeno pepper from Mary's Gardening. And if you are privy to last year's gardening drama, where everybody's jalapeno peppers they bought from the store turned out to be something other than jalapeno peppers. That's just another reason to, um, to buy from small companies, um, to, to buy seeds and start them. Or like last year we didn't get the seeds started in time, but I had bought peppers from my local Amish greenhouse. And that's just one of the benefits to buying local like that is that we didn't get wrapped up in jalapeno gate last year. <laughs> But hopefully nobody has jalapeno gate this year. But I'm going to go ahead and plant a couple of them in my gardeners. And I'm going to do two seeds per pod on most of these. There's some like one of the tomato varieties that I'm going to plant that I don't actually have enough seeds to plant two per pod. So we'll just plant one per pod, but that's because it's a very rare variety. But most of these I'm going to go ahead and plant two. Some of this is because some of my seeds are older and I just want to make sure they germinate. If you're precious about your seeds, start one per pod and you can fill in the rest later. Jalapenos are just that good all round pepper that you can use for everything. Nice flavor, nice kick. If you like the jalapeno flavor, but you don't like the heat, then there's always the not a peño. Um, I have some of those. We didn't really, we planted them last year and we didn't really use many of them. So, um, I'm just going to stick with regular jalapenos, but that is a great option if you or your kids love jalapeno poppers and things, but the hot, the heat is too much. That's a great choice. And I always really like to have a good chili pepper variety. So this is the Anaheim chili from MI Gardener, and we can do all sorts of things with these. We can do stuffed chili peppers, or we can dry it out and make chili powder, all sorts of things. I like to get my seeds from a lot of different places, but MI Gardener, especially for something like peppers where I just like to have a big variety of different kinds of peppers in my garden and tomatoes. And 
the seeds are, I believe they're $2 a packet for most of the seeds on his site. So you can really get different varieties and, and try different things that you normally wouldn't have been able to draw, try when they're, you know, five, six, seven dollars a packet. So that really makes it super good. And always his seeds have amazing germination. And I love, 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 if you've ever seen the back of his seed packets, they're probably the most well-designed seed packets ever. They have so much easy to read information on them, just from germination time to full sun to how deep you're planting them, if it's a pepper, how hot, if it's, you know, if it's good in a pot or like so much information cram packed on there and it's just right here at your fingertips. So I love, love, love in my gardener seeds and man, you, you can't get a better bang for your buck. The other kind of pepper we love to have around here are cayenne peppers. And I actually have two variety of cayenne peppers. I've got cayenne, the regular plain old cayenne pepper. And I also have, I saw this year, and my gardener had a purple cayenne pepper. So we're gonna try them. Um, it looks like the red one is a little bit more hot than the purple, but the purple will be super fun to have. Um, I'm from South Louisiana, so I love Cajun food. I love to cook with cayenne. These are great. And as a side note, cayenne pepper is a really great medicinal thing to have on hand. Um, it's really great at lowering blood pressure. If you sprinkle some in a glass of water and you're having a migraine it, and you take it, it really, it can help alleviate your, your headache. It, um, <laughs> it's hot, so it can clear out your sinuses if you have a cold. I love to have cayenne pepper on hand for medicinal uses as well as food uses. So we've got, Cayenne Long Slim, and these are both from M.I. Gardener. The packages are slightly different. You'll notice one is shiny and one is not because these are his older packages and these are the shears. Ooh, I love them. <laughs> Which I'm excited about this because these paper packages were really nice, but if you get them wet at all, you know, paper disintegrates. This is gonna hold up to just a little bit of moisture, which is really nice when you're working in the garden or working around soil blocks that are already moist. So I'm gonna do one whole row of the red and one whole row of the purple, because like I said, we love our cayenne pepper around here. And I'm so excited, it's been beautiful and we've started getting our garden in order and putting mulch on the garden. We do deep mulch method. Um, if you're unfamiliar with that, you should check out the documentary called Back to Eden with Paul Gauchi. And we're, we tried it for the first time a couple years ago because we got some free chips from Chip Drop. And it has been, it's been really nice. The biggest benefit I've seen so far is we haven't had to water hardly any. Like last year, I don't know that we watered until maybe mid-August, which was really nice because it holds the water so well. And then next I have the Buena Mulata pepper. This really actually looks very similar to the purple cayenne pepper that I haven't tried. It might be, I don't know, just a different name for the same pepper. But we did grow these a couple of years ago and they just grew like crazy and did amazing. So I'm definitely growing these again. I'm just gonna put them in half a row. And in the other half a row, I'm gonna put a different kind of chili pepper, chili de arbol and give that a try. These are new to us as well. Next on the list is Tabasco peppers and I am gonna plant a whole row of these. That's probably silly. I probably don't need a whole row because they're very prolific. And once they start putting out peppers, they put out peppers. And if you've ever eaten Tabasco peppers, you know one Tabasco pepper goes a long way. <laughs> they are stout in flavor and heat, <laughs> but um, I made some, the last time we grew these, I made some uh, Tabasco sauce, like homemade Tabasco sauce for my dad, and it turned out really well. And again, Louisiana girl, so we like our Tabasco sauce. So I'm gonna try to plant some more of these. If I get, I, I don't know, I might not plant the whole row of them. I might not plant all four. I might give a couple to my dad to put in some pots or in his green stalk. We'll see. But I'm gonna go ahead and start four of them because, I mean, yeah. <laughs> 
This next variety I have, I have not actually tried yet, but I have like three or four packets of it. Um, I really should swap them for something or go put them in the library seed drop. Our library has a, a seed bank. These are called dado peppers and it says on the package, blazing hot. <laughs> so I am assuming they are really, really, really hot. These were a free seed variety I got from Baker Creek. So eh, we're gonna try them <laughs> and we'll see. My brother-in-law really loves super hot peppers. So if nothing else, he can have these. And on the same row, I'm gonna put my habanero curvan orange, which are also crazy hot. <laughs> All right, and then two on the last one, the Bikino Yellow Piquillo Pepper. This I got, the, both of these I got in a grab bag. This one is from a grab bag several years ago, um, and my gardener had a thing where you could, at the end of the season, buy seeds for half price in a grab bag, but you didn't know what you were getting. So <laughs> he sent them to you and you got to, it was super exciting. Um, I love at the end of the season, Mary, that's where I got these from, Mary's as well. Um, several different seed companies do that and it's a really inexpensive way to get seeds and it helps them out because they're trying to get rid of last year's stock so they can restock for the new year. Um, and seeds last. Seeds last a really long time if you're willing to keep them. <laughs> um, this one I have planted and this one did really well. And the little bitty, <laughs> it's little hot peppers and they're teeny tiny and they're all over the plant and they were just so fun to just pop in salads or whatever. Um, they just give a little bite. This also says it would work great in a container. I do remember that the plants were, were fairly tiny. And then on the second half, this is actually a grab bag from last year, I think, is the Pasilla Bajio pepper. And um, maybe I've planted this before. The name sounds familiar. I'm not sure, but we're gonna try it because why not? <laughs> and then the final thing I'm gonna do for these, I'm gonna take some vermiculite. I've learned this with these soil blocks. They're quicker to dry out. Um, and because I'm not using my own seed starting mix, I don't have as much control over the moisture. So I am gonna just sprinkle some vermiculite over the top and that's gonna hold in moisture on the top of these so they don't dry out as quickly. I am decorating brownies. Michaela just said, it looks like you're decorating brownies. <laughs> All right, time for sweet peppers. I'm gonna swap out my charts where I wrote down what I'm gonna plant. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a sticker on this. Let's see, let's do turquoise heart here. And a turquoise heart here. Now the first 100% necessary sweet pepper for our garden is the sweet banana pepper. This is my husband's favorite. I'm definitely gonna plant a whole row of these, which by the way, in my soil block trees, they're four by eight, so a whole row of them is only four. Um, but we definitely want it. They do really well here, but still, I would like to have a bunch. And then if I have extras, I can pickle them or can them or freeze them even and have plenty to last us the year. Because, well, Sometimes if you buy these at the store, if you can even find them, they're just a little bitter. So it's always better to grow them in your garden. You'll notice probably the queen theme of my sweet peppers are bell peppers. We use tons of bell peppers and I just really love having all the colors of bell peppers. I don't have huge success with bell peppers. I mean, we get enough to eat fresh and it's great. I haven't been able to, we eat so many that I haven't been able to have prolific enough plants that we're able to put them away. Hopefully this year I'll have better luck. I'm planting a ton and a ton of different colors. <laughs> so I've got Sunbright Bell, which is this bright yellow on this row. And also on this row is gonna be the Diamond Bell, which is like this really pretty like creamy white color. And then on my next row, I've got just the classic golden California wonder pepper and a big red bell pepper. Again, more colors. <laughs> and on the next row, two peppers we really love. This Lisa pepper, which I had never heard of until a couple years when I, I tried it out. It is a sweet 
delicious pepper and they did really well in our garden. We had a bunch of these. And then this shishito pepper is a really good grilling pepper. So both of these I really enjoy, but again, they're both pretty prolific. So I don't feel the need to plant like full, like tons of them. So a couple plants of each are gonna keep us in them and we'll be great. Then here we have our California Wonder Pepper, the tried and true bell pepper. It can either be green or red, depending on how long you leave it on the vine. These actually came from green stock. These were free seeds that came with our green stock. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant these. I'm gonna do a whole row of these because this is, this is our bread and butter here. <laughs> And on the next row, I've got the Purple Beauty Bell Pepper, another variety of beautiful bell peppers, and pepperchinos. So the pepperchino peppers, we love, because we love to chop them up and put them in roast. Uh, I also love to pickle them, so pepperchinos. And then another bell pepper row. I've got lilac bell peppers, which were a new variety from my gardener this year. They're a light purple. So these will be, these look so pretty on the package. I'm a sucker for a pretty veggie. <laughs> and then the chocolate beauty, which are a nice dark brown. The last two are a poblano pepper, which I think technically is a hot pepper, but it's a really mild pepper. And then this Aji Kachucha pepper, I think that's how you say it. Now the Aji Kachucha was one I had never heard of um, but in reading the descriptions and looking at the pictures, I was like, oh, we'll try this a couple years ago. And it produced so well. And these were little peppers, but they were just beautiful bursts of color in the garden and they were delicious and they were easy to pull off and use. Sometimes when you get the little bitty ones, they're a pain to pick off, but these were not. And, um, yeah. So I'm definitely gonna plant these again. I don't need a whole bunch, so that's why I'm splitting a row. And just like I did with the hot peppers, we're gonna put, sprinkle a little bit of vermiculite to maintain that moisture level in our blocks, or at least on the very surface of our soil blocks. I like to bottom water these, but sometimes the top can get dry. And I use a spray bottle, but the more we can really regulate the surface moisture, the better. All right, next up is tomatoes. We've got three giant 16 foot long cattle panel trellises that we plant our tomatoes on. So we need quite a few to fill it up and I always plant a few extras. And if I have too many, then I can give them to friends because who doesn't need tomato starts? And with pretty much all these, at least all the ones in this tray, I'm gonna plant a whole row for tomatoes of these. So the first one is going to be Bonnie's Best. This is just a great medium-sized round tomato that is good, solid canning tomato. I like to have these around this week. We can a lot, um, especially like in the months of August. Um, I like to have tomatoes that I can use year round in soups and things. And yeah, this is a good one. I've got several varieties of paste tomatoes. Another thing we like to can is tomato sauce. And you can make tomato sauce out of just a regular tomato, but these small tomatoes that are technically classified as paste tomatoes that have a less watery inside, they, they make a lot more efficient sauce. Um, so I always love to have a good variety in my garden. So San Marzano is a solid choice here. And this one is from my gardener. Our garden wouldn't be complete without ground cherries. They're not tomatoes per se, but they're in the tomato family. So I start them with my tomatoes. I'd never heard of a ground cherry until like three or four years ago. And we got them and grew them. And my youngest daughter loves these. I mean, it's like candy in the garden. They're super sweet and you just pull them off um, when they're ripe and then pull the paper stuff off of them, paper skin, and just pop them in your mouth and they are just like a sweet, sweet treat. Aunt Molly's has been her favorite variety of these. There's several, there's a pineapple variety and Hanover maybe, but Aunt Molly's is, 
is her favorite. And I will say this, these are great at reseeding because even though we didn't plant them last year, we actually had several ground cherry plants pop up. I love things that will reseed and volunteer the next year. I just, it's so fun. <laughs> it makes gardening, I don't know, exciting. <laughs> we have the pink Berkeley tie-dye tomato. I just think these are beautiful and they're supposed to have a really amazing flavor. So we haven't tried these yet, but that's next on our list. And then I've got my beefsteak tomatoes. These are specifically for my father-in-law, who I'm sure is watching this. So hi, Papa. <laughs> and uh, I'm planting these for you. <laughs> these are his favorites. Then I've got black creme and these we didn't know about until one of our sweet friends, Miss Kay, uh, told us about these and these were her favorites. We planted them a couple years ago and they were delicious and they did really well in our heat. So we're gonna go ahead and plant some black creme. Thank you, Miss Kay. And some of these tomatoes I'm having to be a little more precious with because I'm running out of the seeds of them. So I will definitely be saving some of these seeds this year because several pack, several of these packets we're out of. But saving seeds is a great way, like one tomato can replenish tons and tons of seeds. One tomato probably has 50 to 100 seeds in it. All right, then we have in honor of my pink loving child, Brandywine Pink Tomatoes. <laughs> I don't know how pink they actually look, but they say pink, so she's excited. We're gonna make sure she has some pink tomatoes. She planted some pink ones last year and they just never did really well. And so I don't know if it's we got it in too late when it was just so blazing hot or what, but I'm gonna, we're gonna try again and let her have her pink tomatoes. And then last in this tray, uh, I still have some more tomatoes in that tray, but we've got the Amish paste tomato. This is another tried and true paste tomato like the San Marzano. I'm excited to make homemade sauce again. It's, we used it all in some of our freezer meal cooking and while I was glad to be able to use it, now I'm sad because we really are out of our garden stock from last year. Um, save maybe a thing of pickles or two and then some canned jelly. And I think we may have some pie filling, but like the, the vegetables. Yeah. We're done with the veggies. <laughs> so it is time. It's time for it to be spring. It's time for us to be able to have fresh veggies again. Some of the things we're missing. Oh, I forgot to sprinkle my vermiculite on there. So let's get that on there. It's much easier. You can do all this stuff later. You can water later. It's, you can do these things, but I find it much easier to do up front. That way, when you stick them back under the grow lights, they are ready to go. All right, let's see. Let's do a pink sticker for these. And this is gonna be more tomatoes and some bok choy. I'm gonna start off with some bok choy. This is purple lady bok choy. Um, I, do, I do love bok choy. I hadn't tried it until a couple years ago, really, the garden makes me try new things. I get excited about growing the pretty things and then I have to eat it to justify planting the pretty things, which is really good for me because I'm learning to eat my vegetables this late in life <laughs> because they're pretty. <laughs> and y'all, fresh vegetables, they taste so much better than the yucky store-bought cans of green beans that we grew up with. There's a reason we didn't like vegetables. Yeah. They're way better fresh from your garden. <laughs> so I'm gonna do two rows of this purple lady bok choy. I can direct seed it too later if I, if I want some more. But I'm gonna go ahead and get some started so it's ready to go out when it's time. But I didn't need a whole tray for this and I also didn't need a whole nother tray of tomatoes. I only have so many feet of tomato planting space. So this helps me <laughs> on both, both aspects. I, I can use this tray for both things. All right, this 
the giant crimson tomato. This is the one that Luke from MI Gardener found in a shadow box or something. And it was 80 year old seeds and he planted them and started them back. They're very limited. And two years ago when he first did it, I started some and they were doing so well. And then overnight I had some tomato hornworms come and just decimate my plants and they never bounced back. And it was heartbreaking because you only get five seeds. Like there was, and actually at that time, there was a package limit too. Like now I think you can order more packages if you need more seeds, but five seeds in here. It's so exciting. It's exciting to be part of like the projects that are bringing back old varieties and things. So when I said most of these I'm planting two in, but there are some that I'm not. This one, I don't have enough to plant two in. I have five seeds. One of the holes is gonna have two but the rest are gonna have one. Just in case I get one that doesn't germinate, I can swap it around, but oh no, okay. It's so, oh, it feels like a lot of pressure. It feels like a lot of pressure. Oh, no, you come back here. Okay, I actually have six seeds in here, so. Two of these are gonna have two in their cells. And then two will have one. And we will hope that I have great germination. I never have trouble with germination with the MI Gardener seeds. They're fantastic. All right, Paul Robeson. This is just a good standard big slicing tomato. It is delicious. It's a, it's a beefsteak variety, um, but it's got it's pretty, it's got like a dark top and it kind of fades down to red. All right, next we have the Brad's Atomic Grape. These, at the end of the season, when almost everything was dead in our garden, these things were going strong all the way up until the hard freeze. These did amazing in the garden and they're really beautiful. They're like these little torpedo shaped tomatoes and they're purple. They start out like purple and green and then they turn to purple and red. They're so much fun. <laughs> um, so highly recommend, especially if you live in a really hot climate. We live in zone 7B here in Oklahoma and these things just, they really survived the hot, hot summer. And not just survived, they thrived in the hot, hot summer which sometimes is hard for tomatoes. They just get spent once it gets above 95 degrees. They're like, oh, these, it was 110, I don't know. And these were like, nah, it's nothing. I got this. Mortgage lifter tomato. This is a huge tomato and these are beautiful. And the reason it's called the mortgage lifter is the guy that um, invented, invented is not the right word, the guy that bred this tomato and started selling the seeds, used it to pay off his mortgage. So he called it the mortgage lifter. So it's kind of a fun little story. But these are, these are some large, delicious tomatoes. Okay, the next two, I'm planting half a row of each of them because a lot of them are for the aesthetics. A lot of the reason to plant these are for the aesthetics. The Spoot Tomatoes also did really well, like the Brad's Atomic Grape. They were just flourishing in the hot garden. And they're so cute. I mean, they're adorable. <laughs> However, if you have ever tried to pick a bucket full of these things, it is really obnoxious <laughs> because they're so teeny tiny. Um, so they're kind of aesthetically, they're for the aesthetics. They're fun and they're delicious but they're just a pain, so. But so I like to put these, like I have, you know, my big long tomato trellises, and then I have several arched trellises that I will plant beans on or squash or different things. And I like to put things like this just on the front of them, just to kind of fill in some space and it's just aesthetically pleasing. The champagne bubbles are same, they're bigger, um, but they're kind of a pain to pick. But my oldest daughter loves these. She thinks they're so delicious. So I am gonna plant some. And like I said, both of these varieties are just 
pretty. They're dreamy <laughs> and I like having them in the garden. And the more variety you can have in your garden, that attracts pollinators and all sorts of stuff. So even though these aren't our favorite to just harvest bushelfuls and bring in, they're still worth having for us. So we're gonna just plant a couple of each. Here's another all-purpose tomato. This one is called the vintage wine tomato and it is, it's so pretty. Really, that's the reason I like it. It's not, I mean, it tastes good. It tastes, it's a good solid choice, but really the reason I'm planting it is because it's pretty. <laughs> it's got these beautiful like stripes in it and it just, it's a good solid tomato. But I love, okay, look. I love pretty things like my eggs. The reason I get my chickens is I'm like, okay, how can I get the best egg colors? Like all the darks and the olives and the blues. And so I'm a sucker for pretty. You know, you can be utilitarian and love pretty things all at the same time. <laughs> you just can. Sometimes it's important to be able to enjoy the work that you do in the garden and outside and just, yeah. It's okay to love to plant pretty things just because they're pretty. <laughs> is there something, what's, what is the thing that you like to plant because just 100% because it's pretty? <laughs> Tell me in the comments, I wanna know. <laughs> Maybe I won't feel so guilty about it. <laughs> and vermiculite. And that is our four trays of tomatoes and peppers. And we are going to take them and we put these humidity domes on. And then I'm gonna put them on heat mats under lights until they germinate. And then I'll take them off the heat mats. They don't, they need the heat to germinate and then they're fine. So then I'll take them off the heat mats and let something else sprout on my heat mats because I don't have as many heat mats as I have places. But the garden planting area is getting quite, quite full. I've, I've filmed several things that I have planted, but I haven't, I haven't filmed everything. Um, <laughs> there's a lot. It's okay, it's about to start going out into the garden in a few weeks, which I'm really excited about. There's sunshine out there today, even though it's cold. It's ah, sunny and beautiful out there, so I can't wait to get out. Thank you so much for joining me as I'm just sitting around planting stuff and talking about varieties. I would love to hear what varieties you're planting this year and when you're starting your stuff. I mean, I'm zone 7B. I know that some of y'all are different zones and some of y'all have already started and some of y'all have a few weeks to go before you start. So I would just love to hear what you're up to in the garden, what you're planting this week, what varieties are your favorite. Just leave it down in the comments. Hit that like button if you got some value out of this or you just enjoyed hanging out with me today. And if you wanna see updates on all we're doing in the garden this season, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell and you'll be notified when our new content comes out. Y'all have a wonderful day.